to have Tyra with us. Um, I've had the privilege of interviewing her in the past and vividly remember the conversation. So welcome back, Tyra, how are you doing? Thank you, I'm doing good and I'm excited to be back again. Yeah, I want you to, just for those people who are going to see you for the first time or maybe didn't get the, an opportunity to see that interview, just um, where you're from and your tribal affiliation and, and just tell us a little bit about yourself, that'd be cool. Well, I'm Tyra Shackelford, I'm Chickasaw and I live in Oklahoma. I do mostly textile work. I specialize in three ancient weaving techniques that predate European contact. Um, and then I just try to use those techniques to create more contemporary art and wearable art. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's me. That's very cool. And so when we're um, talking about textiles and um, I actually looked at some of your pieces um, after we had talked that one time. And um, I do remember us talking about the, te the technique that you had. And so I'd love for you to just share what is that, um, what does that mean? And then um, I think even uh, what was intriguing about your interview with me the last time was just the research that you did to be able to, to grasp these very old techniques. So could you share that with us? So I, I started out when I was 12 learning how to finger weave and we wear finger woven sashes with our regalia mm -hmm. and I wanted to make a belt to match my dress. So that's how I first got started and fell in love with, with weaving. And when I got older, I um, had the opportunity to work in our cultural resources department for the tribe and research a lot of pre-European contact uh, techniques and artifacts. So I really, I really fell in love with these items that our ancestors were creating a long time ago. And I wanted to preserve those techniques and, and bring them into present day uh, because some of them people just aren't doing anymore. Mm -hmm. And I um, want to create these new beautiful pieces to inspire future generations to keep it going. So one of the techniques that I work in a lot now is called spring, S-P-R-A-N-G. That's okay. a, a Scandinavian term. And you find that technique used all over the world. Um, ancient Egyptians used it. Vikings used it, Native Americans used it in uh, a thousand years ago before Europeans came here. And it's used mostly to create clothing items. Um, one of the pieces that I've created with it recently is more like an installation piece. It's a very large uh, ghost-like shawl. It's 10 feet tall and four feet wide. And it's, it looks like lace work. It is an ancient lace, lace making technique, um, but it's done all by hand. You don't have a loom or anything. And uh, it's like knotless netting, mm -hmm. but you can, you can do a whole bunch of different designs and uh, just looks with this type of technique. So I really, I really love that one. That's the one I work in a lot. When you say you work in that a lot, is it, um, are you using it like in the trim or are you making large pieces with it? I make large pieces with it. Like I've made a dress, I've made several shawls. I've done some 2D work that uh, is framed and will hang on your wall. And I incorporate Southeastern designs into the, the 2D pieces that I create. Um, so I just play around and have fun with it. Very cool. Do you have any, um, do you have any pieces to share with us in reference to some of the work that you're doing? Not, not out <laughs> and around. <laughs> okay. 
Well, I have to ask that question because definitely we get artists who kind of have like little things or they, you know, they have their art. And so it, I, I have to ask that. Yeah. Well, what if I had prepared more, I would have hung one up behind me on the wall. <laughs> oh, well, next time, next time we will do that. So what are you working on now? Uh, right now I'm working on a spring piece for the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. So that, that large piece I was describing before, it's called The Lady and the Idle George Museum owns that piece. Um, but the Smithsonian had asked about creating a second version of that. So I'm making The Lady number two and they oh. will be similar, but not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's been a process. It's gonna take, when I'm done, it'll have taken about six months to complete right. that. So it's you know, that piece was very um, elegant, like almost like a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very beautiful. Thank you. Have you ever been commissioned to do one personally for somebody or are these museums snatching them up? <laughs> um, personally, no one's asked me yet, but I will take orders. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Um, because I think for the idol George that the lady was actually with this dark background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it was just this white flowing, beautiful dress, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I created it. I wanted it to hang where it looks like it's on a person, on a body form without you being able to see that form at all. Right. And I was really pleased with how they uh, did the mount to display that piece. It looks exactly how I envisioned. So then once this project is done, what are you anticipating for, For I'm assuming um, it'll be probably spring when you're free again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, after I finish this, I need to start creating some new competition pieces for next year's shows. And this past year, I, I did a dress with a lot of quill work on the bodice. Um, and I want to play with that more, maybe create a different type of bodice shape, but, but still incorporate a lot of quill work. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also been looking into our feather capes that are traditional for our people. And I want to do some spring shawls that incorporate the, the feathers and um, some different draping. So I've got ideas going on in my head. That's a very similar style to the Cherokees, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. A lot of Southeastern cultures had the feather capes. And I want to do something that's uh, not replicating our old work, but, but more modern and you could wear it somewhere now. Oh, that's cool. That's mm -hmm. cool. So taking what we what we've done traditionally and use it as a, a, a wearable expression of, of art, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, the red capes are usually like red with those beautiful white feathers on them. So what, what else do you have going on as far as, so aside from competitions, I kind of want our audience to know like, um, because you make very unique um, textiles, Mm -hmm. But on your website, I'm assuming that you sell other things as well. Right now, it's mostly textiles. I have been collaborating with a San Felipe Pueblo artist, and I've been learning some jewelry work, and we're, we're working together to release a collection of some silver and copper jewelry that's Southeastern inspired. But, but other than that, it's just getting ready for shows. <laughs> yeah, and you're just creating and spending a lot of time on that. That's very cool. Um, so in reference to, I just kind of wanted to talk to you about um, also, you know, your website. Um, we had um, just briefly talked about it, but you've definitely seen some activity since Virtual Indian Market, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Indian market definitely helped. 
uh, bring more people to my website. So that was really nice because I think the number of people visiting had doubled since oh, since wow. Indian Market started. So that was a great, great That's platform. Cool. Did you do a virtual winter Indian Market? No, I didn't. I didn't feel like I had the inventory right now. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of artists who were like, I don't have a lot of inventory, which is good. Like there's two things happening there. They're either selling it or they're, I know that there's a lot of artists who are doing the same thing as you. They're in that creation mode for um, the highly anticipated physical markets again, just in hopes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I bet you, are, are you missing, are you missing seeing your friends and Winter oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like a family reunion every art show you go to and right. not getting to see all of my artist friends in person. It's been hard. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's been hard for a lot of artists. It was fun because during a uh, winter virtual Indian market, we had some artists who were doing the booth hopping just to be able to go in and have, you know, see some of their friends and and you know just have conversations and how are you doing so that's good do you feel like you are um <clears throat> overcoming like the the challenges of covid and getting your creative uh skills back has, has that been happening um you know when all of this started from like march to july i didn't work on anything oh and yeah, it, I don't know, just this, maybe the stress affected mm -hmm. my creative energy. Mm -hmm. um, but I have been working on this piece for the Smithsonian since July, and I should have it finished soon. So I'm kind of getting back in there. And then I have these, these new ideas going around in my head. So I'm ready to start something new. That's cool. That's exciting. That's exciting to hear. That was consistent. I think that there were lots of artists who were challenged and mm -hmm. tried to be inspired and was really having a difficult time. So that's that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So you're and you're hunkered down for winter right now. Is it it's trying to snow here, so <laughs> it's getting cold here. We might have some snow Sunday. So we'll see. That's cool. Well, I just appreciate you coming on with us. I always enjoy talking to you and I look forward to seeing your new piece. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you say, I, I do have to ask you one question because I this is for artists in, in particular, but when you said that the museum commissioned you for your piece, can you just tell me like how that happens and um, how did you get that exposure? Um, cause I know that we talked a little bit about, you know, you'd come on, you'd come on the scene with Indian market and you got a really good response. Right. And, and so tell me a little bit about that, Tyra. Yeah. So the Smithsonian has a committee and I don't know how often they meet. Um, but another artist I know who has work purchased by them had helped me uh, get in contact with someone on that committee and you can submit work that they they consider to purchase for the year and they have I don't know what their budget is every mm -hmm. fiscal year but they have a budget to purchase from con like artists mm -hmm. um, so you just submit photos of, of pieces you have and then they consider all their submissions and decide what they want to purchase when I was in that process they, they did purchase one shawl that I already had uh, created, but they asked about making this second version of the lady. And I was like, yeah, I can make another one. <laughs> so it, it wasn't even a piece that I had submitted to them, but they had seen my work somewhere and, and asked about it. So it was a really, really good experience. Um, but... I mean, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I can share that that email address of who I initially contacted and um, help them if they want to look into that too. 
Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I definitely feel like we're um, <clears throat> in a moment in time where we, we are sharing and helping and, and encouraging one another. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Tyra. Awesome. So January is, um, we're doing a uh, featuring of textiles. And so Tyra is one of our virtual indie market artists. And so this, this interview was to be able to share her work and and we just wish the best of luck to you, Tyra. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for having me again.